mutual authentication. And here by mutual authentication means, of course, we do know that when the mobile comes into the, into the network, the network should be able to say whether the mobile is allowed or not, or whether the mobile is actually who it, who this, who, what the identity of the mobile is or not. But mutual authentication is also that the mobile is able to say whether the network that is serving the mobile is actually, it's actually the home network of, it's, it's actually the network that the mobile is wanting to connect to. So there is also an authentication of the network by the mobile. And how does this authentication or how does this proof of identity happen in the network? We will start from a very simple situation and then we will cover, go into more, uh, get closer to how authentication is done in the LTE system. The root part or, or the main concept in this authentication is, is using this example where Alice and Bob want to communicate with each other. And there is an adversary in in the middle, which who, which is Eve, and and Eve wants to listen into this uh, this communication. Also, may want to uh, come off, uh, want to uh, show her identity, want to, want to put on a false identity, and um, and make Bob believe that actually Eve is Alice. So the main security concept that exists over here is that Alice and Bob have met before previously and they have shared a common secret, which is the secret key K. And so this is the main um, secret that is used to identify Alice and Bob. So the idea is this is random enough so that nobody else knows these keys. And this is also unique enough so that it is a unique pairwise key between Alice and Bob. All right. So when Alice wants to communicate with Bob, um, Alice goes ahead and says, I'm Alice. Of course, anybody can go ahead. Eve could have gone ahead and said, I'm Alice. So Bob wants to make sure that the person who he is actually talking to is Alice. So he provides Alice, Bob provides Alice with a random number R and asks Alice to encrypt this random number using an encryption algorithm that they both have agreed with to create an, a ciphered or an encrypted text called ciphertext C. And when Alice ciphers this text, um, the, this random number by, by using the encryption algorithm and the key that only Alice and Bob know, then when Bob receives the ciphertext, Bob has a decryption algorithm and can, can get to the unciphered or the plain text by doing a de decryption algorithm and check whether this is actually correct. If it is, if, if actually Alice has used the, the right key and with, with the encryption algorithm. So the encryption algorithm is not something that is a secret. The encryption and decryption algorithm are publicly known uh, algorithms and that's the way typical cryptography is working is that you don't assume that you you try you don't build in security by camouflaging or by making the encryption or decryption algorithm as a secret those are pretty well known but it is the keys that are um, that that are secure and that are supposed not to have been compromised so with this with this um, uh, with this step, Bob is able to uh, authenticate Alice and know that the person who he's actually talking to is Alice. But Alice also wants to make sure that she is talking to Bob. So what uh, Alice what Alice does, Alice provides uh, another random number R two to to Bob and says encrypt R two using your key and send me the results. And so Bob encrypts R2 with, with his key K and sends a cipher text. And from this cipher text using a decryption algorithm, Alice kind of computes the random number that comes out of it and checks whether that is equal to the random number that she had sent to Bob. And if it does match out to be the same thing, then essentially the message could only have come from Bob because Bob is the only one who has this uh, secret key. Now, once this authentication has happened, so both of uh, Bob and Alice have authenticated each other without sending their 
private key over without sending the shared key over the network which you never want to do because if you send a shared key over the network um, the adversary is going to be able to get it and then from there on you would have to change your your secret your uh, your key um, this scheme where both the uh, the parties who are authenticating each other share a common key is called symmetric key cryptography so this is symmetric key cryptography um, or, or the entire kind of cryptography scheme based on having a shared key between them is called symmetric key cryptography and and this is the basic uh, mechanism that is used in LTE for um, and actually all of 3GPP systems for authentication and also once this authentication happens obviously after the authentications Alice and Bob want to talk to each other so they they would further want to encrypt their messages using a key so one option is to use the shared key that they do have but that creates uh, a danger that if that if this key gets broken or, or snooped on by an adversary and is able to decrypt the key then their master key is safe so typically they would during this authentication process they also come up with what's called a session key and the session key is the one that they would use for encrypting and decrypting their messages to each other so the encryption would be based on using the session key and not the master key and they would take a message and they would encrypt this and you would get a cipher text and send the cipher text back and forth so this is at the at a high level the main concept behind how authentication happens in 3gpp systems and in essentially in any system which is based on symmetric key cryptography now uh, obviously this is a much simplified version so we, now we will try to get to in the next two sequence of 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 flows we will get to the encryption and uh, the sorry the mutual authentication mechanism that is closer to how it is used in 4g system so we here we consider a slightly a closer to realistic case where we have a mobile the, the ue the user equipment as we call it and the user equipment has a sim card and in the sim card is the identity of the mobile which is the imz which is the international mobile subscriber identity and stored along with the identity is the secret key that is unique to this mobile and in the home network of the mobile and let's assume that the home network of the mobile is t-mobile and in t-mobile's home in t-mobile's network where there is a home subscriber subsystem is a database that has the the same mapping of the identity to the to the key to the private key of uh, which is stored in the in the sim card of of the mobile and in our um, in our attached le lectures we had we had basically said that this person is Mehmed so this is Mehmed's sim card and that's his key and uh, on the other side this is on stored in the HSS is Mehmed's key along with Mehmed's IMSI so but then let's take the case that um, that Mehmed is actually roaming into another country so he's come to Turkey and the operator that is providing that is having a roaming agreement with the home network is let's assume it's Turkcell so Turkcell has roaming agreement with T-Mobile I'm not sure whether they do or they don't but we here we are taking examples so let's assume that um, that that Mehmet is has come to Turkey on as visiting from US and the visited network here are basically the E node B and the MME are provided by uh, by T-Mobile and it's connected to the HSS which uh, for Mehmet is is the home network so so for this authentication mechanism what happens is that every time there is an authentication which is done between the network ue and the network there is a sequence number which is stored in the sim card and also stored in the hss which is incremented and this sequence number we will see gets used for in the mutual authentication and that's why i'm showing it here 
So, so there is a sequence number that is stored in the SIM, uh, that is incremented and stored in the SIM and the home network, which keeps account of the number of times uh, authentication is being done. Uh, the mobile, it comes into Turkey, it sees that the operator advertises its PLMN ID, which is the, mo which is the mobile country code, followed by the mobile network code, which belongs to Turkcell. So it advertises this. The SIM card has information that um, that team that Turkcell is a roaming partner of of T-Mobile. So it goes ahead and the mo the the UE goes ahead and provides its IMSI. So it says that hey, I am Mehmet. I am the IMSI corresponding to to Mehmet. And part of this IMSI, as we saw in the attached lecture, has the PLMN ID of the home network, which we had said was T-Mobile. So it has the mobile country code and the mobile network code of, of T-Mobile. So based on this mobile country code and mobile network code, um, the MME goes ahead and asks for an authentication request to the home network of T-Mobile. So it says authentication request. Here is the MC. Here, uh, here is the VPLMN. I am the VPLMN, which is Turcell in, in this case, which we had said. And please authenticate this, uh, this user who has roamed into my network. So now, as we, as we had covered over here, uh, the home network will go ahead and generate a random number R. It also goes ahead and generates what it says is an expected result that uh, that the mobile should provide to to the network. So so that's basically in here we had said the encrypt, encrypted value of R, and and we will see in, in the next step why this is being done, why the expected results is is being computed. And uh, just just hold on for a second. It also computes something which is called an authentication token. And this authentication token is actually used for mutual authentication. So, so here, as I said, the sequence number which is sitting in the, in the HSS, which is the same as what the sequence number in the UE, is going to be the term that is going to be used by the UE to authenticate the, the network. So it is equivalent to this encrypted value of R2, where R2 is actually the sequence number. So, um, so it goes ahead and, and also computes the authentication token. And it also goes ahead and creates what's the session key. And this KMME is the key that the HSS will provide to the MME sitting in the in in um, in Turkcell's network, and that would be the key that would be used for further deriving keys to be used for encrypting messages between uh, Mehmet and and the visited network. So with all of these computation, it it does this computation and sends the random number R, the authentication token the expected result and the session key that should be used uh, if, if authentication is successful, it sends that over to the MME. These four elements together is what's called the authentication vector. So this is authentication vector. Authentication vector and or AV, this authentication vector is sent to, to the MME. The MME goes ahead and provides a random number R and the authentication token. So with the, uh, with the random number R, before the mobile goes ahead and sends the encrypted value back, it first authenticates the network by looking at this authentication token and doing an inverse of basically inverse of this function over here to come up with an estimate of what the sequence number is. So it goes ahead and, co and computes that. And if the sequence number matches the sequence number that it is expecting, is it, it, that, it is, that it has stored in the SIM card, then it knows that the network is actually who is, is, has, is the network, is the home network of, of the mobile. 
So this is the mutual authentication. So in, so the way the authentication is happening is the very at the very first step, Alice is first authenticating Bob and then Bob authenticates Alice. So that, that's the flow. So the UE first authenticates the network based on the authentication token that is being sent by the network. And once that is true, then the mobile computes both the session key and it also computes the the response which is equivalent to the encryption of the, the random number which is using pretty much this function which both of them know, know to be used and it sends back the response to the MME. The MME checks whether the response that the mobile has sent is equal to the expected response that was sent by the HSS to the MME. And this is where, you know, this is how you, this is why the XRES was computed over here because the master key is never sent out to the, to the visited network. And that is why you just send, the HSS just sends the expected response to the MME and the MME then computes that MME then just simply just compares what the mobile sends over the uh, over the radio to what it has received from the HSS and if this matches the mobile is authenticated it then will go ahead and send an okay here it actually once we look at the flow it, there is no okay over here but there is another message that goes back which essentially tells the ue that the authentication is successful and once that is done they both will go ahead and try to use now keys which which would be used for uh, encryption and integrity protection of messages so this is um this is this is the first level of detail into the authentication flows for a 4G system that are being provided. Um, some of the th key things to be noticed over here is that the main authentication is happening in the visited network and it doesn't happen, the, the check of the authentication doesn't happen in the home network. And this is actually changes from 4G to 5G. Uh, which we are not covering in these lectures, but but that's something to to keep in mind. Um, another key important thing here uh, to also keep in mind is that the the is that the test that the the PLMN ID advertised by the network is actually the same PLMN ID that the network provides to the home network. Um, is 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 um, is part of this authentication in the sense that if the PLMN ID that um, that this network advertises on the radio is not the same as what the PLMN ID it says to the home network, then the KMME that is computed by the network and the KMME that's computed by the mobile would not match, and none of these. Um, encryptions and integrity protection would work. So there is a test in as part of this the key derivation that makes sure that the identity that the mobile network advertises over the air and the identity that it provides to the home network is the same. Uh, the reason why this is got built into the 4G system uh, which is actually um, not there in the 3G system, this test whether whether the PLMN ID are the same provided to the core network versus provided on the air has been that there have been a few cases where the visited network has gone ahead and said something else to the mobile saying that actually I'm Turkcell, but on this other side it goes ahead and it says that I'm actually a roaming partner uh, that that has been set up and and then and 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 then there have been some cases where the mobile has seen uh, charges of roaming charges which have been significantly higher uh, this uh, this algorithm which is being used for authentication is actually called an algorithm which is called mil milen milenite milenage i mean milenage it's actually a french uh, name for it and you can get more details of this algorithm in the 3gpp specifications of 35206 so if you're more interested in the details of this algorithm you can you can go refer to that we will also cover this in a little bit more detail in the next slide 